Welcome to the fifth video of the Edinburgh Guide to the PSA. This video will focus on section 5, Calculation Skills. This section assesses your ability to correctly interpret and judge the appropriate dosing requirements and your use of basic arithmetic skills. This usually involves calculating dosages by incorporating the weight of the patient and the strength and formulation of the drug available. These questions consist of a clinical scenario, followed by a prescription and a question. The desired unit will also always be stated next to the answer box. Note that within this section, distracting information not directly required to reach the answer may be included in the question stem, such as unnecessary weights or dilutions. Unlike many sections, the BNF is rarely useful for these calculations, as all the necessary information is given to you. Within the PSA, this section is worth 16 marks. There will be eight questions worth two marks each, with marks being awarded for the correct numerical answer given in the units specified. Core content typically assessed in this section includes calculating the correct quantity of a drug needed to achieve the prescribed dose, adjusting a dose of a drug for a patient's body weight or surface area, calculating infusion rates for the prescription using an infusion pump, and converting doses and concentrations of prescribed medication. Now, onto some questions to help demonstrate typical content assessed in this section. This is a term baby in the neonatal unit who requires intravenous benzalpenicillin sodium to be administered for a possible respiratory infection. The dose of benzalpenicillin sodium required is 25 milligrams per kilogram every 12 hours. He weighs 3.6 kilograms. Benzalpenicillin sodium is available as 600 milligram powder dissolved into water for injection to make a final volume of 6 milliliters. The final question asks you what volume of benzalpenicillin sodium should the patient be given. It should be provided in milliliters. Now, before I reveal the answer, I'd like for you to pause the video to consider how you would approach this question. Now that you've considered your answer, I will walk you through the question. The correct answer here is 0 0.9 milliliters. But how do we get to this answer? First, we need to calculate the total dose required, taking into consideration their weight. The dose of benzyl penicillin sodium required is 25 milligrams per kilogram, which when multiplied by the patient's weight of 3.6 kilograms, makes a total of 90 milligrams. Now we need to find the volume, as this is the desired unit that the question is asking for. The concentration of the benzyl penicillin solution available is 600 milligrams in 6 milliliters which is equivalent to 100 milligrams per milliliter. However, we have already calculated that we only need 90 milligrams, so we need to divide that by 100 to find the number of milliliters that contains 90 milligrams. 90 divided by 100 gives you 0 0.90 milliliters. There are multiple ways of arriving at this answer, so don't worry if you got there using an alternative method. I hope this question has highlighted the need for dose adjustment based on patient's weights and has demonstrated the skills required to calculate with different concentrations. Now let's consider question two. This is a 44 year old man in the emergency department who requires intravenous acetylcysteine to be administered for a paracetamol overdose. The initial dose of acetylcysteine required is 150 milligrams per kilogram over one hour, with a maximum dose of 16,500 milligrams. He weighs 90 kilograms. Acetylcysteine is available as 200 milligrams per milliliter and is to be delivered by adding it to 200 milliliters of 5% glucose. The final question asks at what infusion rate in milliliters per hour 
should the syringe pump be set at? I now encourage you to again pause the video to consider your answer. Now that you've had a chance to think about your answer, we will walk through this question. The correct answer here is 267.5 millilitres per hour. And how did we get to this answer? So first, we again need to calculate the total dose required, taking into consideration the man's weight. The dose of acetylcysteine therefore required will be 150 milligrams multiplied by 90 kilograms, which makes a total of 13,500 milligrams. This is below the maximum dose that can be administered, so it is safe to continue with this calculated dose. Note that if the patient had been a bit heavier and we had found a dose over 16,500 milligrams, the dose to be given must be reduced to that maximum dose of 16,500 milligrams, as stated in the question. Now that we have the dose, to calculate the infusion rate, we need to consider the volume to administer that will reach this dose. The concentration of the acetylcysteine solution available is 200 milligrams per milliliter, and therefore the volume required is 13,500 divided by 200, giving a volume of 67.5 milliliters. However, before we calculate the infusion volume, we should note that this drug has to be administered in 200 millilitres of 5% glucose. Thus, 200 millilitres needs to be added to the volume of acetylcysteine solution required. This means that the total infusion volume is 267.5 millilitres. This is a commonly forgotten step. Now that we have the infusion volume, we can calculate the infusion rate. This dose is to be given over one hour. Therefore, the infusion rate is simply 267.5 millilitres per hour. I hope that makes sense. This question incorporates many different steps that can act as useful learning points. You need to calculate and, importantly, check the dose against the maximum. You need to calculate the volume using a concentration and finally, you also need to calculate the infusion rate. Now let's move on to our third and final question. This is an 88 year old woman in the emergency department who requires a loading dose infusion of intravenous digoxin to be administered for atrial fibrillation. The initial dose of digoxin required is 0.75 milligrams over four hours. She weighs 75 kilograms. The infusion of digoxin has been prepared at a concentration of 1.5 micrograms per milliliter in 0.9% sodium chloride to be delivered by continuous infusion. From this stem, the question goes on to ask at what infusion rate in milliliters per hour should the syringe pump be set at? This is now the last time I'll ask you to pause the video to try and calculate your own answer. Now that you've calculated an answer, I will walk you through the question. The correct answer here is 125 millilitres per hour. But again, how do we reach this answer? The complicating factor in this question is the units. To convert between milligrams and micrograms, multiply and divide by a thousand respectively. The dose required is 0.75 milligrams which is thus equal to 750 micrograms. The solution for the infusion has been prepared as 1.5 micrograms per milliliter. So therefore, to find the number of milliliters required to make up the 750 micrograms, you need to divide 750 by 1.5. This will give you a volume of 500 milliliters. This is required to be given over four hours. So therefore, the infusion rate is simply 500 divided by 4, giving you 125 millilitres per hour. 
Now, it doesn't matter whether you converted the dose to milligrams or micrograms at the start, as the final answer is required in millilitres. Just make sure that you have both of them in the same unit. Also, you should note that here the weight has been added as a distractor. You do not need this information for the dose calculation. This may also be the case in the real PSA exam, so it is important to critically evaluate the data before jumping straight for your calculator. I hope you've enjoyed this video as part of our Edinburgh Guide to the PSA series. For further study resources, please visit our website. And if you have any queries about anything covered in this video, please contact our team via our email or our Facebook. If you have a minute to spare, we would love it if you could complete the feedback form linked below in the description. We look forward to seeing you in our next video, Section 6, Adverse Drug Reactions. Ha, ha.